I want to take a quick moment to talk about the problems involving tidal forces at the surfaces at the event horizons of black holes. In these sorts of situations, I'm asking you to think about not just what the force at the surface of a black hole is, but in particular what the tidal force is at the surface of a black hole. Remember, we understand the tidal force that if I have some gravitating object here, the force to me is if this object here has mass m and I'm a distance r away, then the force here is given by Newton's force law proportional to the mass, proportional to my mass, and how far away I am. But since I'm not a single point-like object, that's not an entirely well-defined thing to measure because the force at my feet is going to be different from the force at my head. My feet are slightly closer. My head is farther away. So it makes sense to talk about the tidal force, or really the tidal acceleration. But we'll write it in terms of the tidal force. The tidal force then takes into account this fact that my feet will feel a different force from my head. So even if I'm standing near the, some gravitational uh, source where it's changing, then um, I'm going to feel some additional uh, pull. Even if I'm in free fall and I'm just falling smoothly towards the, the object, my feet are going to be stretched out uh, from beneath me. And so we want to understand what that tidal force is. So the tidal force we use is just simply g m m. But now there's a slight change. It's over r cubed, where r is the distance to the center of the object, times 2 times the height. I have some object, height h. So we'd like to ask the question then, how, what sorts of tidal forces we're going to feel in the vicinities of various objects. Now, the question I asked you was relating the tidal force near a surface of a black hole to that of the Earth. I'm going to do a slightly different example where I relate the tidal force at the surface of a black hole, at the event horizon of a black hole, to the gravitational pull at the surface of the Sun. So remember, the Schwarzschild radius is 3 kilometers times the mass of the black hole divided by the mass of the sun. So we want to ask this question. We want to ask the question, when is the tidal force, so that's g m black hole mu times 2 times your height over the short shield radius of the black hole cubed, right? So this is the equation for the tidal force. I've plugged in the short shield radius, the radius of the black hole cubed. Let me just draw what the black hole is here. So this is the short shield radius. You are falling into the black hole. And you want to know what the tidal force is here. So uh, it's the usual formula, gmm times twice your height divided by the distance away from the center of the black hole cubed. And we want to know when is this force equal to the gravitational pull I would feel if I were at the surface of the sun. Not the tidal force at the surface of the sun, but the gravitational force at the surface of the sun. So at the surface of the sun, the gravitational force is just g m sun mu over radius of the sun squared. Well, now I can simplify this considerably. I can cancel off the g's. And I have this following equation. I can plug in for the Schwarzschild radius here using this equation. And I get that the mass of the black hole times twice your height divided by 3 kilometers cubed times the mass of the black hole cubed. Then this m cubed goes into the numerator is equal to the mass of the sun over the radius of the sun squared. Well, I can then rearrange this equation by moving, canceling off that 3, making it a 2. And then I can move this mass of black hole up there, move this mass of the sun there, move this radius of the sun up there. I'm going to get an equation that looks like this. Mass of the black hole squared is equal to the radius of the sun squared times 2 times the height divided by 3 kilometers cubed times the mass of the sun squared. So this is just manipulating this equation. So 
I can now plug in the radius of the sun is about 696,000 kilometers. I'm going to assume that my height is around 2 meters. I'm not actually 2 meters tall, but it's close enough that it's, that it's good enough. I'm closer to 2 than to 1. You are 2. So um, if I plug this in, what do I get? Mass of the black hole squared is 696,000 kilometers squared times 2 times 2 meters over 3 kilometers cubed. So before I finish this equation, I need to be a little careful because remember, the height here is in meters. All these other units are in kilometers. So I need to convert that meter into kilometers. So 2 meters in kilometers is equal to 2 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. So I have overall 4 times 10 to the minus 3 kilometers all in the numerator. I've pulled that kilometer squared out. I've converted this meter into kilometers. And I have 3 kilometers cubed in the denominator. So I just need to, sorry, this is a square. I need to square this, multiply that out, divide by 3 cubed, which is 27. And all together, I'm going to get something which is around 7 times 10 to the 7 mass of the sun squared. But we're not quite done yet, because this is the mass of the black hole squared. So let's just plug in. Again, we have mass of black hole squared is 7 times 10 to the 7 times the mass of the sun squared. I just take the square root of both sides, and I get a black hole, which is about 8,000 times the mass of the sun. So if I somehow managed to stand on the surface of the sun, I would feel a force pushing down on me that would be a certain strength. And if I were falling freely into a black hole, I would feel a tidal force that would be that equivalent if that black hole had a mass which was 8,000 times the mass of the sun. The problem for you is to try this problem, but instead of working out what the tidal force is, what, what kind of a black hole gives you a tidal force for the sun, equal to the mass of the gravitational force at the surface of the sun, the question is how large of a black hole would have a tidal force at the event horizon of the black hole equal to the ordinary gravitational force that we all feel standing on the surface of the Earth. But this will give you a template for how to solve that problem. You just need to use the mass of the Earth instead of the mass of the Sun, and the radius of the Earth instead of the radius of the Sun. Hopefully that's helpful.